Hello and welcome back to Matplotlib for Python developers. In today's video, the first of section 3, we're going to take a look at some special purpose kinds of plots. In section 3, we're going to see how to make non-Cartesian axes and plots, how to plot vector fields, how to show statistical information with box and violin plots, and finally how to display ordinal and tabular data. In the first video, we're going to take a look at non-Cartesian plots. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do polar axes, how to apply log, symmetric log, and logistic scales to your axes, and when to choose the appropriate kind of scale and projection for different kind of data. Let's dive right in. So we'll begin, as usual, by importing what we need. And let's bring up some simple plots. So this is our old familiar friend, the sine plot, with a cosine and a linear plot alongside it standard stuff. But what if we want to take a look at this cosine and sine plot not as a function of its linear length along here, but what if we want to take a look at this and interpret it more like what the actual way in which sine and cosine are used mathematically, namely their trigonometric functions dealing with angles. So these numbers that we're passing to sine and cosine can be interpreted as angles on triangle. The sine being the opposite length from a given angle, and the cosine being the adjacent side length. So oftentimes when we're dealing with trigonometric or harmonic data, where one of our axes is actually like an angle, we want to take a look at that in a polar projection. So actually treating it like an angle. And we can do this by bringing up a new subplot. And let's just do 1, 1, 1, so the same size as what we've had before. And giving a projection equals polar keyword argument to that. With that, we'll actually get a polar plot where the values are treated as actual radians. So now you can see our sine curve does exactly what we would expect it to. It's looking at positive parts of that triangle and it lives in the upper half of our polar plot and our cosine does exactly what we'd expect that to do lives in the right half of our polar plot and our linear curve you can see here as it goes along the angle progresses out further and further because we go from 0 to 10 here and that's more than 2 pi you can see our curve is actually multi-valued in a lot of places. So at the angle 0, there are two points here. Now, you may not think that this is particularly useful for most of your plots, and for many people it isn't. But if you're dealing with things that involve harmonic analysis, say you're an engineer, or you're dealing with something that's periodic, oftentimes a polar plot can be extremely visually informative in a way that a Cartesian plot is not necessary. Let's take a look now at a couple of different situations when linear axes can fail you. So let's plot these numbers from 0 to 10 against the power of 10 to these numbers. So we're going to go from 0 to the power of 10 to 100 actually in this case. And as you can see here this plot's not very good for actually seeing these numbers. Because the end of our data range is so much bigger than the beginning of our data range, we end up having the vast majority of this hugging the y-axis. Now we can transform this using a logarithm into something that will more easily fill our screen so that we're not left with empty screen real estate here and all of our data shoved to the bottom. And we can do this in a couple of ways. The easiest way is to not call plot but instead call semi-log y, because the y-axis is what we want to get the log of. If it was the x-axis, we'd call semi-log x. And there you can see we now have the logarithm of our numbers, and we have, of course, a perfectly straight line, because the logarithm of an exponent is identity. You can also get log for both of your axes using log log. And there you can see, again, we have a much better way of visualizing this information. You also can, after the fact, change the scale using the set 
y scale and set x scale methods. And there you can see we do exactly the same thing. Now, when you're setting the scale manually like this, you actually can do more than just log. So let's look at another example here. Here we have a similar thing where we have very, very wide range of data. And again, most of it just looks like a straight line because the end is so much bigger than the begin. Watch what happens if we take the log of this. You'll notice here that I'm subtracting 100 off. So this line that appears to be at zero is actually below zero for a lot of it. And you can see, for everything between zero and two, we lose our data because the log of a negative number is non-existence. For this case, where we have some negative values and some positive values in a huge dynamic range, matplotlib provides the sim log scale. And there, it actually splits into two log plots, one showing you the positive values and one showing you the negative values. This is a really nice way to actually visualize stuff that has a huge dynamic range and still contains a mixture of positive and negative values. Finally, matplotlib provides for you a third, actually technically a fourth if you count linear scale, the logistic or log it axis scale. So here we have values between 0 and 1. And logistic scales are really good for dealing with probabilities. So if you have probabilities that like with these previous cases, mostly 0 in some places, but peak up towards 1 and you want to be able to visualize that more easily, the logistic or log it axis is really good for that. The one downside with the logistic axis is oftentimes the minor ticks are not well scaled. So you can see here that they tend to run right into each other. And what the logistic axis does really is it gives you lots of information at the left and the right hand side. It focuses essentially the resolution. You can think of it like a map projection where it's focusing amount of screen real estate to the high and low ends around zero and around one. So if you're dealing with this kind of scale and you want to get rid of this ugly smash of text here, you can disable the formatter for the minor axis as you remember from the axis video from the previous part. And doing that keeps the ticks because they're often useful to see, but doesn't have that ugly mashup of text.